Hello and welcome, I am your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to create some really nice and fun confetti. Let's get started. Alright, so this is actually a very appropriate video for today since we've just passed a thousand subscribers. So let me first say many thanks to everyone who is watching and I'm glad you're enjoying the videos. Now we want to create a really fun effect, what it seems like confetti falling on the screen. Something that would be used on a level complete or player win or any sort of success screen. We're going to build the confetti in the UI system, so let's go into our canvas here. I have my game handler, inside I have a UI game object, and I got my canvas right here. It's a screen space camera, canvas, using this camera which is displaying the canvas. Okay, so in here I am going to create a new game object and name it Window Confetti. I'm going to stretch it to occupy the entire screen and set everything to zero. Okay, now here in my prefabs folder I am going to create a new prefab and name it PF Confetti. Now in our prefab, let us add first a image component. For the visual, I have a sprite sheet here, so let me switch this from single into multiple. Get the sprite editor and I'm going to slice all the frames. So they are in 64 by 64. Okay, so there you go, first frame, second frame, third frame, fourth frame. So my sprite sheet in here, as you can see, it's like a piece of confetti just flipping back and forth. We are going to tint this sprite sheet, that is why we have one face in white and one in gray. So back to our prefab here, let's add the first frame and let me drag it into my scene here. Reset the position and set the size as 15 by 15 and let's give it a nice blue tint. Okay, now I'm going to add the image animator script. This is the script that we created in the previous video for the simple sprite animator. It simply plays a list of animation frames sequentially. It's very simple. So in here, I'm going to set the frame rate to 20 frames per second. I'm going to set it to loop. And for our frame array, let's first lock the inspector so we can drag all our frames and drag all our frames into the array. Okay, and let's test and see if our piece of confetti is in there. Yep, there it is. Just a single piece of confetti it contains some basic sprite sheet animation, so it seems like it's flipping back and forth. Okay, good. Now let's set up the script to actually spawn them. So in here, remove the original game object since we're going to spawn it from the prefab. And I'm going to create a new c -sharp script and name it window confetti. Let's add a variable for our prefab. So a private transform pf confetti. Make it a serialized field so we can set it in the editor. And let us create a subclass to handle our individual confetti logic. So we're going to make a private class confetti. In here, let's make a constructor for our confetti. And inside, we're going to receive a transform for our prefab, a transform for our container, and a vector2 for our anchored position. In here, let's instantiate our prefab into our container. We're going to store our transform and we're also going to store our rect transform which is using unity engine.ui. So here let's set our transform and our rect transform equals transform.get component type rect transform. Okay. Let's set our right transform dot anchored position. Okay, so we have our confetti being instantiated and set up. Let us make a private void update. And in here, we're going to move our anchored position by a certain move amount. So let's say vector two, move amount was a new vector two, and we're just going to move it on the Y, let's say a hundred. And up here, we need to store our anchored position this dot anchor equals anchored position okay in here anchored position plus equals the move amount times time dot delta time and set our right transform dot anchored position to our anchored position okay so this should spawn the confetti and move it downwards now let us go up here and create a list that will hold all of our confetti call it confetti list 
let us make a private void awake in which we're going to instantiate our list and let's make a private void update in which we're going to th go through all the confetti in our list list and call the update and finally let's make a function to spawn our confetti spawn confetti in here let's create a new confetti object confetti equals new confetti for the prefab we're going to give it the pf confetti for the container will be this window and for the anchored position let's calculate that so the anchored position we want to get a random position between the left and right side so let's grab the width and height of this transform so float width equals transform dot get component rect transform dot rect dot width let's also grab our height okay so for our anchored position let's pick a random value within the entire width since the origin of the window is in the middle, we want to randomize a position between minus half of our width and plus half of our width. So random.range between minus width divided by 2 and width divided by 2. And for our height, we want height divided by 2. So in here, the way we have set up our canvas, when we get the right transform width, we're going to get this entire size. But since we are anchored in the middle, we want to grab a random value between minus half of our width and plus half of our width. So it will be a random value on the total width. And for our height, we want to put right on top of here, which is half of our height. Okay, so finally on our way, let's spawn a confetti. And in here, let's add our confetti to our confetti list. Let's drag our script, drag our transform, and now it should spawn a confetti and see it move down. Yep, there it is, it's moving down. Okay, we got a single piece of confetti working. All right, now let's add a time to spawn more. So in here, I'm going to make a private float spawn timer, and also a private const float spawn timer max, which will be 0.033f. So we're going to spawn some confetti 30 times per second. So in here, spawn timer minus equals time dot dot time. If our spawn timer is less than zero F, then we're going to reset our spawn timer by increasing it by the spawn timer max. And in here, let's spawn some confetti, but let's spawn a random amount. So int spawn amount equals random dot range let's say between one and four pieces and for int equals zero spawn amount and we're going to spawn our confetti so 30 times per second we're going to run this code and we're going to spawn between one and four pieces of confetti and we know we need to spawn that one on start so let's see right now yep there you go we now have multiple pieces of confetti being spawned Great, okay. Now let's add some size variation to our confetti. So in here, when we set up, let us go into our rec transform dot size delta and let us multiply that by a random value between let's say 0.8 and 1.2f. So essentially our size will be randomized between 80% of the original size or 120% of the original size. Let's see if we have some bigger than the others. And yeah, there you go. This one is smaller than that one. And yeah, it's very subtle, but it helps to add a bit more variation. Okay, now let's add some rotation. For our rotation, we're going to store a private vector three for our Euler. And we're going to store a float for our Euler speed. And in here, let's set up our Euler. Keep the X and Y stable since this is in 2D. And for our Z, let's get a random value between 0 and 360. This will be our starting Euler. Transform.local Euler angles equals Euler. And for our Euler speed, let's grab a random value between 100F and 200F. And let's also randomize it between 
clockwise and counterclockwise. So your speed times equals, let's get a, another random value between zero and two. Now, if this equals zero, then we're going to multiply it by one F, if not by minus one F. So in here, we are getting a random value between zero and two, so it will be either zero or one. Now, if it is zero, then we're going to multiply our Euler speed by one, so essentially keep the same thing. If this random equals one, then we're going to invert our rotation speed. So it will either go clockwise or counterclockwise. And down here, let us increase our Euler dot Z by our Euler speed times time dot delta time, and set our transform dot local Euler angles to our Euler. Okay, so now our confetti should be rotating clockwise and counterclockwise. Okay, there you go. Some of them going clockwise, some going counterclockwise. Yep, right there. Okay, good. Now let us also randomize the move speed amount. So let us put up here a private vector two for our move amount. And we're going to calculate it in here. On the X, let's keep it at zero. We just want it to fall straight down. So let's grab a random dot range between minus 50 F and minus 150 F. And in here, we're going to use the move amount that we set in there. Okay, so we should now have some with a speed different from the others. And yep, there you go. These are falling very quickly. These very slowly. All right, that has quite a lot of variation. Okay, so now finally, let us add a bunch of different colors. So we're going to go up here and make another serialized field that will be a private, an array of colors, call it color array. And on our constructor here, let's receive a color. And we're going to set our transform.get component of type image, set the color to our color. And in here on our constructor, let us grab a color from our array. So the caller will go to the caller array and grab it random.range between zero and our caller array dot length. And here give it the caller. Okay, so we are now picking a random caller. So let us go into the editor and let's select a bunch of callers. Okay, I have set up all my callers. Now let's hit play and see the effect. Yep, there you go. They are moving at different speeds. They got different colors. They are rotating some clockwise, some counterclockwise. The size is random. So there you have it. Now, the only thing we're missing is cleanup because if we hit pause here and we check it out, as you can see, they spawn and they never vanish. So let's clean up our objects once they go past our window. So into my code here, I am going to receive a float for the minimum Y. And in here, I'm going to give it the minimum y, which will be minus height divided by 2f. And in here, let's store our minimum y. And then here, if anchored position dot y, if it is under our minimum y, then we want to destroy our transform dot game object. We also want to stop updating it from the list. So let's convert our update instead of a void. Let's return a Boolean. And we're going to return true when the object has been destroyed, else we're going to return false. So up here on our update, if update returns true, then that means the confetti has been destroyed. So let's remove it from the list. Confetti list dot remove our confetti. And in here, let us create a new list of confetti. So we are cycling through a clone of the original list and on it we are modifying the original list. If you don't create a clone, this would cause an error because you cannot modify a list whilst going through a for each. Okay, so let's see if our objects are being cleaned up. There you go, here's my scene, here are the objects being spawned, and once they go down there, boom, they vanish and are correctly being cleaned up. Okay, great. And there you have it, a very nice fun effect that you can apply on a level complete or a player win. As always, you can download the project files and utilities for free from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. And once again, thank you for subscribing to the channel. Alright, see you next time.